Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. But you already know that, don't you? Because that's why you've tuned in. Now, today I'm joined by Tom from, uh, is it Merseyside, Tom? Waddington? Uh, yeah, a bit of everywhere. Waddington, I live in Newton, just outside it now. So. Alright then. Just, well, uh, before uh, I start with Tom, I just want to point out, whoever sends me the best question in before next Monday morning, I'm going to send you a pair of brand spanking new RDX gloves. These are 130 quid a pop, I believe. So these were given to these were given to me by Dennis because I, I went. I think I gave Carl Froch a pair of gloves to sign for some charity Dennis was doing, and I says, "Here, Dennis, I'm, I'm down a pair of gloves, and give me these." So. These will go to the best question before Monday. And the runners-up, the top four runners-up out of the top five, will get a free Porky Pig Teddy post, all right? So, and uh, I'll pay for the postage, worse luck. But I just want to get that out. And I want to thank everybody for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment because with the interaction that I get a few people, we take things on board. So I just want to thank you for that, for sharing the video. If you don't like the video, don't share it amongst your pals on WhatsApp. If you like it, give it a share and give it a thumbs up. I'm not twisting your arm, so how are you doing, Tom? Good, good. I've got a few questions for you. few questions? Um, all right, well, first of all, Tom, how, how, how are you doing? How's your family? Are they all right? Yeah, everyone's yeah, all fine, yeah. How's life in how Warrington? It's good, it's good. I don't really, I just, yeah, just chilling. Good, all right then. Fire away then, Tom Tom the Piper's son. Stole a pig in the way you ran. Stole well, a first on the First on the view, I'd like to ask, obviously this weekend, Eddie Earnshaw, what do you think of it? Top to bottom. The Usek one? No, the one coming up this weekend. The, the oh, triple the women's, women's one. one. It's a bit tighter, isn't it? Uh, it's one of them I just can't get even up for. Why can't why can't her? But like I've come up with my head, right? Why is Liam Smith not getting out? For example, not one five four. Why can't he get him a world title shot? Since he's gone to match him, the only fight he's had on match him is one in America, isn't it? And he fought Eggington, was it in Liverpool, weren't it? On the same bill as Fowler, Fowler Fitzy. So he's he's only four in one live fight since he joined match him. So why is Eddie not pushing him into pushing him for? Leading a card or anything? Uh, it's an hard one, that. I think that Liam Smith's a really good fighter. I think he's European stroke world level. Right? He's got two wins over Liam Williams, and they're all saying he's world level now, aren't they? Yeah. Liam Williams. Now, I think Liam William. Uh, sorry, I think Liam Smith, Beefy Smith, I think he's a good fighter. I think that. Uh, He's left Frank Warren to go to Eddie Earn, saying that he's always wanted to go to Eddie. I think once he said that, he put himself in an awkward situation because Frank wouldn't have liked that, that Liam Smith always wanted to go to Eddie. Fair enough, he'd have had his brothers in his ear. But Frank wouldn't have liked that because three of the brothers out of the four left Frank to go to Eddie, didn't they? So Frank wouldn't have liked that one bit. And plus, when he said that, he put Eddie in a stronger position because what he did... He put Eddie in a situation where Eddie knows that now that he's said that he always wanted to go there, Eddie's basically the only game in town out of the top two, isn't he? You see yeah, where I'm coming that. from? So Eddie knows when well, he can't go back to Frank now he said that. And then you've got Joe Gallagher having a bit of beef with saying things about Frank while he's saying, look, you're not going to get a decision here. Blah, 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 you need to do this, you need to do that in the first Liam Williams fight. And I think that they're little things like that because boxing's full of insecure men from boxers to trainers to managers to promoters and I fell out with them all, all the way through the line. People I know, all of them, right, for having an opinion. Insecure men, now the champions, your Clinton Woods, your Robin Reed, your Carl Thatchers, they brush it off. But your next tier down... They they uh, they don't. They must have heard about our competition for Porky Pigs. <laughs> they don't, and I think that he's put he's standing in a, in a weak position saying that Liam. 
And um, where's he gonna go now? He's bought, he's more or less parked up. If any, don't give him a date. Well, he is, isn't he? What? He's an MTK fight, I believe, is he, Liam? MTK, yeah. He's managed yeah. by MTK. No, but so why can't him. MTK get him out? Because they can't go to Frank Warren, can they? have to leave him there. And he'll not want to fight on, on a McGuigan or an NSC or an Obson show, will he? Because he's not going to get as much money. So, technically, he was in limbo. He was in, he's in limbo, Liam Smith. And plus, Gallagher's dug him all in an hole, hasn't he, in the last couple of weeks. I know he's tried to correct it. And I respect Joe Gallagher. I've given him a lot of stick over the years, but I respect him for the simple reason he's all for his fighters, isn't he? He won't put him in risky fights unless he's getting paid. But I just think that Liam Smith, I think he'll retire, Liam Smith. I think he retires. He can't seem to do it for him, can they? And look what Frank Warren did for him. He got him a world title. He got him Canelo fight, and then he got beat against Canelo, and he brought him back in another world title. So Frank delivered for him, hasn't he? As Eddie delivered for him. Frank managed him phenomenally. Because if you want to look at who Liam Smith beat for his world title and who he defended against, so he beat he beat John Thompson for the world title, didn't he? Yeah. In Manchester, seventeen and one. A gift. You know, yeah, basically. Do you know what I mean? He got him, and he's losing that fight as well after the six yeah. rounds. He stopped him in the seventh, and then he defended against Jimmy Kelly, didn't he? On the yeah. same card as Billy Joe and Andy Lee. So he had two world title. He had Frank delivered him in terms of a world title, but I think what Liam Smith wanted was the the marquee fight in terms of being in the mainstream, which Hearn obviously tends to have that appeal about him, do you know what I mean? As well, we delivered him a world title in the Canelo fight, but I think Liam Smith maybe thought we're going over to get the Vargas fight or the Kel Brook fight, obviously, domestically. That would have been a great fight, wouldn't it, Brook Smith? You know what, Rob? I think that Liam Smith against Kel Brook's a great fight, and I think that Frank could put a bid in for that after Kel Brook fights Crawford. He could say, look, why don't you fight at 154? Let him get at it and get a payday each and get out of boxing. Because I think that relationships are a bit fractured now between Kelbrook and Eddie Hearn. And I side with Kelbrook on that. And I think that maybe relationships between Beefy Smith and Eddie Hearn are uh, heading that way, a bit fractured. And I think the Gallagher one is, I think Joe Gallagher's in an awful position now. Because he don't want to go cap in hand back to Frank, does he? Eh? You know no, but I feel sorry for Joe Gallagher. Because Joe, hey? Joe Gallagher goes heavy. I feel sorry for Joe Gallagher though, because most of what he said was right, for one. I don't go the reason, but everything else he said was right. He goes heaven and earth to his fighters, but now he's in a position where fighters may have to leave him now. Because Eddie Hearn's saying, I'm not... What did he say on Coogan's interview the other day? He was... He went, uh, I, I've got loads of fights for Callum Johnson, but I just don't want to deal with Joe Gallagher. So if you're Callum Johnson... If you're not going to get paid because of your training, you're going to have to leave, aren't you, to get paid? He's 34. Yeah, it, it's an awkward situation, but it's one based on emotion. And I, I've been guilty of acting like that first. Knee-jerk reactions. We all say something, don't we? First you're angry, then you're upset, then you look for something to blame, then you want to apologise. We all do it, don't we? Boxing is designed for us all to fall out amongst each other. That's just the nature of the beast. It's nothing personal. It's just boxing and just business, I suppose. But it's designed for everybody to fall out. And look at the situation that Liam Smith finds himself in now. Joe Gallagher is his trainer. He's managed by MTK. But Matchroom don't want to work with Joe Gallagher. But Liam Smith's done nothing wrong, has he? Does he need another trainer? I don't know. He's had a good run with Gallagher, hasn't he? But... To move forward, he might need to get a new trainer. And that's the harsh reality of it. So we lost in his entire run with Gallagher. Because before Gallagher, he drew Terry Carruthers, didn't he? Before he went over to Gallagher. Who what? He drew, he drew that Terry... Was it Terry Carruthers in a four-rounder than Liam Smith early on? That he drew, didn't he? That was a long time he? ago, wasn't it? Before he went to Gallagher. So Gallagher's taken him from... I think, I think he went to Gallagher after he was six or one. So I think Gallagher's taken him from there to now. Be very harsh to leave him now. Only that's the thing we love Gallagher's fighters. It's hard to leave Gallagher because he is so loyal to them and he's only getting in trouble by trying to defend them, isn't he? He's not doing it out with, you know, his own ego. I don't well maybe a bit of his own ego, but not I don't know. I'm dead confused. So I ask you, you know more about it than me. The questions I ask in my head when I listen to these people all day. Well, anyway. Right, moving on. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Do you think Dennis's show goes ahead then on the 11th? 11th of December. 
next month. Mm. Yeah. I like to be transparent in the answers. Mm, I don't. But why why is it been cancelled anyway? Eddie Earn and Frank are putting shows online before then. And they're saying it's because of virus, so I don't know. Personally, I don't think they sold enough tickets to make it pay, so they put the date back. Because I know how they work, don't I? Which is a business yeah. decision. But if I say it don't go ahead, it's people will say, oh, that's because you're not working with Dennis. No, I haven't really had a fallout with Dennis. We just haven't spoke since end of July. He came here and he just missed you by a couple of minutes. But we haven't spoke to fall out. But I don't want to work with him in boxing. And that's how it goes. Maybe in the future I might have a pint with him, but I won't talk boxing. I like to knock about the team players. But he's a fantastic bloke, and I hope it goes ahead because I want Tommy Frank to smash up Kyle Yusa because he's a Steffi Bull fighter, isn't he? But somehow, I don't think Tommy's the favourite in the fight. He's lost three times, only to Kyle Yusuf in amateurs. Um, I think the kid's got his number. Um, but it Cash it is. On it. I like Cash. His cousins uh, own the, the car showroom next door to us here. And they're nice people. And they've all backed Cash. And Richard Towers trains Cash. I've got a soft spot for Richard because he's been through a similar lifestyle to what I've had before he before he's doing what he's doing now. So, and there's other kids on the show. Suffy's fighting Kane Salvin, the the from the same stable. I think it's, is it a better show than anything what we're seeing at the moment? It's not a lot, it's not worse and not better, they're all on a level par. The show where Frampton fought on, in the stu BT studio, it's a better show than what Frank put on. So you've got to take your hat off to Dennis and Steve Crumb. Does it happen on December 11th? I wouldn't put money on it, but I hope it does. Which brings me to the other show that should be happening on, uh, around about that time. Josh Wales, that's being put back, hasn't it? Josh Wales, Josh Wales fight in Spain, that's been going on for a few months now. Why can't that happen? I don't know. Why would you make fights and they're not happen? We've had this before, haven't we, with the Frankie Gavin IBO welterweight title that I... I started uh, making me Dennis, my idea. Got Frankie in office from Birmingham, got in touch with IBO, did all leg work, and it collapsed for two weeks to go. Why do these shows keep collapsing? Why? I'll tell you why. Money. It's about money. It's a money business. Fights can look good on paper, but you've got to get all the parties together. You've got to get all the ingredients together. If you get a rotten apple in the ingredients, the pie's not going to smell nice, is it? And this is how I look at it. And I'll leave you with this, Tom. Boxing is designed for everybody to fall out. That's my conclusion. Even amongst your own stable and your own team. For example, look at Joe Gallagher and Liam. We just spoke about them, haven't we? They're going to mm -hmm. fall out. Or Callum Johnson and Joe. Or Natasha and Joe. They're heading for the fallout. Do you know why? Because Joe said something publicly, hasn't it? Publicly. And Eddie Earns trying to chop him off at knees in and turn them all against him. And that's what happens in boxing. People whisper in people's ears and it's all designed for everybody to fall out. This is why it's best just to go about the business normally. Two seconds, Chris. Two seconds. Two seconds. Two seconds, Chris. This is important. Two seconds. So I just think that it's all designed for everybody to fall out. No, it's no good. It's an 09, too old. All right? Five year maximum age. So, hey there, Tom. Yeah, yeah, I was just. So, but I wish them all the best. Dennis is a good guy. Let me just turn. Go on, sorry. Yeah, go on. I wish him all the best. He's a good guy. So, I'm spinning about five plates here. <laughs> So, Ron, you know, what's your next question? Josh Kelly, where's he gone? Or why, or, and why is he so stale? If he's going to fight a Venetian after 18 months off, when was the last time Josh Kelly had a life fight? Well, we used Joshua Card and he drew it. Josh Kelly, Bitson, Callum Johnson, Natasha Jonas, uh, Liam Smith, Stephen Smith, if he's not retired, Martin J. Ward, John Ryder, Yui Furious, Savannah Marshall. We just had Savannah out, but you haven't been speaking about her. 
the list goes on and on and on. And all them people, they're not vocal on social media, are they? All, all of the people that I've just mentioned to you there. But yeah, Dave Allen, Chisora, Dylan White, Billy Joe, they get out, don't they? And get dates and get offered stuff. Shannon Courtney, she gets dates. Is it because these people are hanging out at Backer IFL on a constant, regular basis? Yes. I don't know. I think it is. Terry Harper, she don't because she don't work her social media. Steffi Bullshit Bull does, doesn't it? So. But if I make a card, then you Steffi Bull. Hey. If I make a card, then you back in the day. If I make a card, yeah. And, uh, Did he punch anything but win? He fought Amir Khan, he took his 10 grand and went home, didn't he? We'll leave it at that on that one, shall we? But, <laughs> yeah, needs to come and fight me. Steffi, come see me. Do you think Josh Kelly beats having this year? You know, Josh, Josh Kelly, David Avenesian, Avenesian, whatever he's called, punches Josh Kelly upside down. Josh Kelly, as we speak, is sat squeezing one out on a toilet. Do you know why? He's thinking about uh-huh. David in Venetian. And Adam Booth will do his best to get him out of that fight where they've shot the mouse off, haven't they? That's how I... They can't pull out that fight now, though, can they? Because he pulled out in Sheffield, didn't he, a couple of years ago. He Venetian's more Venetian. seasoned, didn't he, didn't he? I think Josh Kelly's been found out. And you know when they get found out, what does Eddie Hearn do? He goes quiet on them, doesn't he? Yeah. It goes quiet on him, mate. You know that, don't you? You know what that, that's what happens. And that's just how it goes, isn't it, I suppose? He is coming across like... He is coming across like... Eddie Hearn is coming across like more of a teenage girl now than he used to. More of like... He's probably always been like, you know, the gossiping in the free IFL and all that stuff. You know, but that stuff. So oh, I was saying that's really... He's just more... Argument more, he bites now more than you. You just, you should just say we're the best, and people can't see with the best, or we're the best of the level who's above Rowan and Tennessee, you know, you know what I mean? Whereas now he bites back with him a bit more. Do you not it's think he's worried? When you're fighting back, you're in, you're in a bit of trouble, aren't you? Don't forget, he's managed to worm his way in, Daz- in with Dazon, work his arse off for two years over there, jetting back and forth with business class on a Dazon credit card, right? Mm. He's promoted himself doing all that. He's managed to take millions and millions of pounds out of game. And that's all. They left there and like, oh, we've got no money left now, aren't they? Pulling mothballs out of the pocket. So he's played a big part in that. And it won't be long before he closes that Manhattan office down, Maxfield, USA, all that. It was all a gimmick, just designed to get the money. Boxing goes in cycles, so they grab it while they can. His dad would have told him that. Because his dad grabbed it while he could with Chris Eubank, and then look what happened after. <coughs> Went down he didn't want to know, his dad bailed out. And when Joshua's gone, Eddie will bail out, but it's business decisions. These people are businessmen. They're not bothered about fighters getting smashed up or even killed. You might say they are, but they're not bothered because they're ruthless businessmen. You remember the anniversary of the guy who died on any Eddie's show, don't you, a couple of months ago, the American kid, don't you? Yeah, the one that died on his show. On his social media, he was promoting his book, wasn't he? Going on about his book. He never gave the kid a mention, didn't he, until somebody told him about it. These people are businessmen. Eddie, come see me. Next question. Do you reckon Robbie Davis Jr. is going to be able to push for a world title, or do you reckon he's found his level now? Do you reckon he's hit his ceiling? I like him, he's a nice kid, I think he's Euro level on a good day. British stroke. He's one of I don't think he wins a world title, and I think deep down he knows that. People around him can tell him that. Match correctly, he might fluke an IBO or a WBA regular, I don't know, but I don't think so now. Well, you've just seen Ritson beat Robbie Davis Jr., haven't you? And Ritson struggled against Vasquez, didn't he? But he's got world class power. So his world-class power might get him a world title. But yeah. Robbie Davies hasn't got world-class power, has he? That's the harsh reality of it. And it's not a slight on Robbie Davies Jr. It's not a slight on him. I just think that he doesn't win a world title. Like, I don't think Dylan White and Chisora do. No, I don't think they do, no. That was the difference in that fight, weren't it, Davies and Ritson? I think it was the fact that Ritson can 
Richardson could punch like a mule, in it? And Davis couldn't, so Richardson was there to push him back and head to them close rounds, weren't it? Because the power was on his side. Yeah, I can't understand the word you said there, mate. I said Ritson was able to. Uh, Ritson was. I think that was different in that fight with Davis and Ritson. I think there's similar caliber fighters, but I just think the difference between them is the power. Like you know, like in the the presence of the phys- physical strength, the physicality of Ritson and the power. He's always got that in him at world level, and he's Ritson can chin anyone at world level, can't he? He's always got the punch's chance. Yeah, he's a massive puncher. He's a freak of nature, but in my opinion, and I hope Neil, uh, his trainer, and Jaffa don't. Uh, Think I'm having a pop here, but I think that and and, and the lightweight division is red hot at the moment. It's best division in boxing, isn't it? But I think once Lewis Ritson moved up that extra five pounds, I think he lost he lost his advantage that he had. That's what I think. I might be wrong. He, I don't think he carried his power up to 140 because at 135 he just ran through the division, didn't he, at British level? And then when he got in with that guy for European title, Sarah. Yeah, and he, and he lost a split decision. Is that when they moved up? It isn't it. After that. Yeah, just after he lost. Well, I just think he had a had a bad day at office. He lost a split decision, so it wasn't that bad a day. But he had, I thought he had a bad day at the office, and he should have stayed at that weight. But people start saying, "Oh, you didn't do weight right and all that." Go and do the weight properly and try again instead of saying, "Oh, we're not a one thirty five or one forty. Why your bones aren't grown any bigger overnight, have they? If he'd have got the decision that." At 135, he'd still be a 135 fighter now. But because it's an L and not a W on the box rec- rack- record, they feel like they have to move up. So I think that's the mistake that he made. Pretty similar to Paul Smith when he fought Stevie Bendel. And people thought Paul Smith won. Paul Smith didn't. He didn't get the decision. And what happened? He decided to move up, didn't he? He was never the same fighter again moving up. That's what I think. His physique looks all different. And Paul Smith, when he signed pro, if you remember, turned pro, they were mega right behind him. They put him in that contender tournament as well, didn't they? He had a yeah. lot of height behind him, Paul Smith. When he moved up to 168, game over. And I think Louis Simpson yeah. don't win a world title at 140. If he goes back to 135, he'll earn a lot of money. He might not be guaranteed a world title, but he's got more chance and he'll earn more money. And it's only five pounds. What's that? A couple of chips at the toilet and a good nutritionist. Oh, that's it. I agree. I agree. Well, I'm going to get my next question up to my notes, please. John White Ryder against David Lemieux. Why did her not push that fight over the line after hyping it for so long or hinting at it? Definitely hyped, no, he hyped it, mentioned it a lot. John Ryder beats David Lemieux. He's a shot fighter, Lemieux. Yeah, I agree. Well, it's a good win for White Ryder and push him. But that's not the fight we all want to see. We want to see John Ryder against Callum Smith. If you want to give that a £10 pay-per-view with a good undercard, I could get behind that. Because I think that Callum Smith, probably for what he's won, he's won British Commonwealth, European and World. And he's won a, a Ring Magazine belt, hasn't he? So why is Callum Smith not pay-per-view with his achievements? Because he do not get himself on IFL. But the other, the other side of the coin is, Dylan White is one of vacant British against Ian Lewinson, right? But he's, had, he's on his sixth pay-per-view in a couple of weeks. I know he has been took off it, hasn't it? It's now January, isn't it? So in another in another eleven weeks, Dylan White gets his sixth pay-per-view, and even if he wins it, he's looking for his seventh, and he's not even one of European. But look at Callum's record; he's got all the achievements but no profile. White's not got the achievements, but he's got a big profile. So, can I just say? Can I, can I just say? How many grey areas here? How did how how was Sky and Hay and Ola and her and Bellu hyping about that potential Chisora White fight? You know, in three weeks only. One's just been rendered unconscious in his last fight, and others had ten nothing, and he's just been schooled. What? How the pay per view fighters? Neither's won a world title. There's one world title fight between the two of them. There's twelve losses. And they've both lost the last fights comprehensively. So how could that have ever been sold as a pay-per-view? I don't get it. Am I missing something? Well, we'll say that again. What, what? She's all a white three, yeah. How was Sky trying to hype that as a pay-per-view? When one's just, been, one's just been knocked out. Yeah. Brutally. One's just been schooled. One's got ten losses. They've got one world title fight between the two of them. Twelve losses. 
Like, I don't get it. How was that ever? How was the second one a pay per view, especially a third one? Because they need to get the pay per views out for, for, for. They want to get as many pay per views as they can. Normally, they don't put fights on in January, but they're going to put white on at end of January, aren't they? Point I want to make is do we agree Joshua's pay per view? Yeah, I agree right. Joshua is, yeah. So, who's at his next three pay per view stars? Give me five pay per view stars at match room. Well, including Joshua. Joshua is number one. Give me another four. Well, five fighters that could potentially be pay per view or in the no, right fight. Pay per view at the moment. Or do you mean potentially with right opponent? You're the right opponent or something. I'm on it's about Joshua. regular pay per view guys. Joshua won. Joshua, Who else? Just Joshua. White. No, uh, yeah, Dylan White is, but I don't agree with it. No, he shouldn't be. So Dylan White, no. Who's next one down after Dylan White? Chisora. Oh, Brooke. I know he's left. Brooke, he's he was gone. in. Like that. So he's in limbo, isn't it? It's not, it's not deep, is he, for them? No. See where I'm coming from. So he's got oh. to recycle rubbish. Who wants to see White Chisora free? Three weeks after Derek gets schooled by Usyk. Who wants to see it? Pern, Pern, David Hay and Chisora, they want the money off it. But the fans didn't want to see it and they reacted on social media. Did Ed Robinson want to see it at Sky? Because I've heard no. Did Adam want to see it? I've heard no. Did Johnny Nelson? I've heard yes. Because <laughs> he's a company he man, eh? So my, uh, the money. Somebody once told me, my uh, somebody once told me some fellow who likes boxing. He, uh, he said Johnny, you know Johnny Nelson back in the day. He said there used to be a saying about him. He got knocked down that many times. He got splinters in his ass. <laughs> 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 he been knocked down many times. He said he and he said he used to call him the entertainer because he didn't entertain. Johnny Nelson, come see me. Here we go. Who's the next one? Here? Why has Savannah Marshall not been giving a massive push this week? I thought she was magnificent at the weekend. I'd go as far as to say I think she's the best women's fight in the world. Do you know what, right? You're right. Professional. Exactly right. I've just mentioned that this morning in a video. We've got Weapon at Week coming back this week for a, a one time only. Uh, I mentioned that about Savannah in the Weapon at Week for the simple reason she's just won a world title. She not only won it, she obliterated the girl, didn't she? Right. Look at the difference Shields did to her. Pardon? Look what Calissa Shields did to Hannah Rankin. Just a, a drib jab type round five. Never really hurt her. To what Marshall did to her. Blitzed her. The demolition job, that. She punches hard, doesn't she? Now, Clarissa Shields, does she want to fight Savannah Marshall? I'm not so sure. Why has Eddie Earn gone quiet on it? Why can't he deliver for that girl from North East? Why can't he deliver? Why can't he deliver for you if? Why does Huey Fury when you were Dylan White? Why weren't Huey Fury mentioned when they wanted a dance partner for Dylan White at three weeks' notice? Why? You was ready. You ready? Good to go. Why weren't Huey Fury mentioned? Why weren't McCauley mentioned? Why? Why not? They're not on social media. McCauley might have a fight, but they could juggle it all around. Eddie's controlling them all. They could put Huey Fury... In we correct him and people get behind. In we, why? They could do. They could do. Povetkin's just beat White and he beat Yui. So why not Yui and White? Yui Furies won a British off a champion and fought for a world title. Dylan White won a vacant British and not even fought for a world or a European or a European or a world. But yet he's on his sixth pay per view. Yui's not had one. Why is that? Because you is not hanging out at back or IFL, is he? Like Dylan White. Where do you think Huey goes now, then? Do think Huey's next moves are? I think Huey will fight on pool left on the card against Marius Vat. Was that the marking time fight for him? Uh, marking time fight? I don't know. Vax got an iron chin on his Somebody's told me today. And if Huey stops him, that that's good, isn't it? He, he's made a statement because Dylan White couldn't do with him, could he? People said Dylan White got beat by him, didn't they? Yeah. So I think that's a good fight. 
for, for you a former world champion. Is he whack? Is he a former world champion, regular champion? I'm not, I'm not so sure. I'm not sure. Well, he's been, he's fought for a, a, a belt, and he? You have to have a look on your screen. I, I get confused with all these foreign names. I think he might have been a world champion back or had a regular belt. It'd be a good win for you. If he knocks him out, it'd be an even better win, won't it? He's in the mix. Looks right. Right when the distance with him. Um, he took rounds off wide, didn't he, Wack? He did what? He took rounds off um, Wack, didn't he, Dylan White? He won rounds against him. Um, my next question, anyway. Why is Billy Joe Saunders having yet another ticking time fight? He seems like whole career just seems to be, in the main, marking time. I don't think Billy Joe Saunders is bothered about losing his own. If he were... He'd be more dedicated, but he just seems to drift in and out of sport, doesn't he? Drifts out, calls all big names out, don't fight, and then comes back in, picks up another couple hundred grand, and then goes missing again. So I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe Billy's play, playing it how he wants to play. He's his own man, isn't he? But my opinion is this he's best under the 60 pound fighter in world boxing at under the 60 pounds. He loses his advantages going up to 168 pounds because he's not big enough, he ain't got a long enough reach. You stand him next to Callum Smith, it's like a, a, a light everywhere. He stood next to a light middle, isn't it? You know what I mean? Do, do you think Callum Smith beat Billy Joe? It's on side. I think it's a 50-50 fight. I think it depends who gets the camp right. I think it's a 50-50. I, I think it's a good fight, though. I think it's a good fight. I think Billy Joe wins that one. Um, <laughs> Hold on. Hold on, try it. Try again. Can Kel Brook cause a shock this Saturday? Hey? Can Kel Brook cause a shock on Saturday? No. I don't think he does, but I'm going to have a bet on him as a KO. But no, I don't think he does. I think he's at his depth. But if he wins, he's in a very strong position. And you'll soon see people hanging out at the back of him if he wins. Hell, we go way back, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we do, but you didn't come out to fight. You'll get a lot of people hanging out of the back of him. Uh, how good could Kel have been, do you reckon? If he was matched right in his prime? You mean if he didn't fight Golovkin? Yeah, if Hearn got him the fight to 147 I think he's still a world champion now. I think he'd still be a world champion now. He could have had 10 I'm, defences, couldn't he, and earned 25 million. Everyone's writing them off this weekend, and I keep saying, a good a good Brook is the best win on Crawford's record. Let me just tell, you, Sean, let me just tell you something here, Sam. Two seconds before I tell you this. Just doing my head in it. Come back to pig pen. All right. Doing my head in texting all the time. I'm filming. I'll just turn this off. Uh, Kel Brook, when was the last time that you saw a performance from Kel Brook and you went, wow, he's the real deal? When was that? Sean Porter? Yeah. And how long ago was that? Six years ago, wasn't it? Over six years, six year, four, six year, three months. So, 75 months ago, right? And in that period of time, he's had two good items, been up and down, up and down, up and down, been partying. Over six years. So can he replicate that from that? What do the statistics say? No, he can't. What do the history books say? No, he can't. What do the bookies say? No, he can't. But we're hoping he can. And he's saying he can. But I'm saying he can't. Do you know like Audley Harrison? Yes, I can. Remember them T-shirts? Audley getting yeah. off aeroplane, going through his throat. <laughs> yes, I can on his T-shirt. Well, you know what I was saying? No, you can't. <laughs> Sorry, mate, but I've got to tell it straight. I, I really rate Kel Brook, and I think if Kel Brook turns up, no. super mo I think he's even more motivated than ever as well after this week, after what's gone on in the build-up. Well, mate, I wouldn't write him off. Let's talk, let's not talk knackers here, mate. Let's talk proper. You rate Kel Brook because you're looking at fights from six and a half year ago. Six and a half years, mate. Listen to me. Listen to me, right? Six and a half years is a long time, mate. It's a long, long time. 
Clinton Woods, right? From him fighting from from him win, fighting Roy Jones to to Tarver to, to to Cloud fight. What a seven year period. You're a different person in that period. It's a massive amount of time. <coughs> it's massive, mate, honestly. Six and a half years, it's a lifetime in boxing. People don't hold on to... Clinton Woods were world champion for over three years, wasn't it? You're talking about Kel Brook's last good performance over six years ago. Stop looking at that. It's like Mike Tyson fans. They keep looking at him knocking Burbick out in 1986. Frank Bruno in 1989. 31 year ago he beat Frank Bruno, nearly 32 year ago. You're not going to be able to do that again. Stop being nostalgic. Kelbrook cannot beat Crawford. Cannot beat him. But I want him to, because I like great stories. Oh, it's a great story. But we're talking boxing here. We're talking reality, aren't we? He's yeah. himself. He's admitted skipping training sessions or this and that. He's retired God knows how many times and he's not beat anybody recently, has he? has been inactive. So it's all stacked against him, isn't it? And he's fighting at a weight that he even admits that's too little for him. So he's fighting at a weight, drain weight. So look at all that. You know, the experts, the bookies, they look at all that and they go, he can't win. So all them people that are saying Kel Brooks a beast, look at look at it, going, going like that on IFL or whatever channel is on. Don't be fooled. Get your money on Sunny. <laughs> Get your money on Crawford. <laughs> I hope Kel does it anyway. I hope he does well. Hey. Uh, I hope Kel does it anyway. Harvey, I hope he does to... it, mate, but I don't think he does. I think it's a cat. That's my though. opinion. I hope he proves me wrong. I hope he proves me wrong, but I don't think he will. He's not made well away since 2017, has he, since the Spence fight? Yeah, what about Conor Ben? He's a welterweight, isn't he? He's headlining again, isn't he? He's ranked number six of the WBA. Is he back at number six? I thought he'd drop down a bit. Has he dropped down again since? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Who's he fought? Who did he fight to get top six ranking? I don't know, but... Uh... Well, you don't need to do anything with WBA. You just take them out for a steak and chips, don't you? You lobby for it. Now, this is how I look at it, right? Why is Conor Ben headlining? He's not fought for a British title, but he's headlining on Sky yet again. Headline act. He's not fought for a British title yet. He hasn't won a British title. He's not even fucking fought for one. So why is Conor Ben headlining on Sky yet again? Why is that? Because uh, he's, he's trained by Macho Med Trainer. Because his dad's Nigel Ben, because he's from Essex, because he's got Ben's surname, and he's covered in tattoos. Is that it? Well, why, why is he headlining? Why ain't Beefy Smith headlining? Why didn't they draft him in? And put him in with somebody, say, six pounds above his weight division because he would have only had half a camp. Why didn't they get somebody credible to headline instead of throwing somebody in on a headline act that's not won anything yet? What's he won? He's not got an area, not got an English, no British, no Commonwealth, no European, no world title. But he's headlining on Sky. Why is that? Because he's Eddie Hearn's mate. Because he's, because he's commercially connected to Sims family and trained by Sims family, promoted by Hearn. And they're all one little cult at Matchroom. Why, why is he headlining him, Conor Ben? I hope he wins a world title, but why is he headlining a show? The show's piss weak now with him headlining. Yeah. He's in a tough fight, though, Conor Byrne. The lad he's fighting is uh, 22-1, and one, and he's only lost for a world title. He had some decent wins as well. He was on his box set the other night. For, when did this guy who is fighting have a decent win? When will that? When? He fight, two fights ago. Yeah, he, fought, he, had a de- he had a couple de- like fights with people winning records, relative winning records, and he fought for a right. world title. This guy who Conor Byrne's fighting, get him up on your computer. Let's have a look. Try and get it on. Here we go. I'm going with box work. Just put Conor Ben box work in. Well. There we go. There we go. Formella, there he is. Sebastian Formella, 22 and 1, 10 knockouts, 33 German. 
box. Well, he's not a puncher then, is it? No, but in his three fights before, in his, his two fights before he boxed all well title, he beat that um, Tillian Mabenz, who's 15 and 0. Well, Bert Rariaza, who's 18 and 1. So he only lost to Sean Porter as well. He's not that bad on points. Yeah, but why couldn't they get the Chris Jenkins fight on for British? Hearns would be offered it Warren and Warren turned it down, didn't he? So he said. They put money on the table, shouldn't they? He said that he said Chris Jenkins was over me when they offered, didn't he, in the team? And then but Warren wouldn't let him because he was under contract. So Hearns' version of it was Do you know? Do you know how it looks to me? They're trying to blag. They're trying to blag Conor Ben into a world title position. We know foundations. You know, like Dave Allen, if he'd have fought Lovejoy and beat him, Dave Allen would have been a top 15 WBA fighter, wouldn't he? He'd have been in line yeah. for a world title shot if they went down the line and he were available. But Dave Allen's not built the foundations, has he, to be fighting for the world title? And Conor Ben's the same. For example, if you build this factory here from scratch, you've got to build foundations, haven't you, for it to be sturdy, yeah? Yeah. If it's not sturdy and you don't build good foundations, it's going to fall down on me, isn't it? I'm going to be crushed. Now, Conor Ben, the, the building him up as this killer puncher. He ain't even got a jab, mate. He's got a good right hand, but he ain't got a jab like his old man never had a jab. Point I want to make is this. If the foundations are not secure and it's built on sand, it's going to sink, in it? So, and there's too much of that going on. People are trying to get to the money too quickly and they're not learning the fucking craft. And we're seeing it too far and too often. So too much, sorry, and too often. And sooner or later, somebody's going to get hurt, man. Somebody's going to get hurt. And like I said, when they get hurt, it's all, it's all been signed off by border control and medical people and all that. The promoters, he's in the clear, isn't he? They're the ones yeah. who drive off in the fancy cars with Rolls Royces. They're not bothered, are they? They might say they're bothered on social media for a few days and then a week and say they're going to retire and all this. week later, all forgot about it, mate. It's a business. Yeah. You might befriend a cow in a field or a pig in a pig pen and it might be your best favourite pet. But when that pig or that cow or that lamb, when they're off to market and they get slaughtered, you don't, you don't think about them again. So that's how yeah. I look at it. Boxers have got to be looked after properly. There's too many boxers getting pimped out at the moment, in my opinion, and some has got to change. And I'm hoping to change it. I don't know. In my I opinion, I'm, I think the best example of what you were just saying is when Anthony Yard for Kovalev, he went for the WBO European route, didn't he, with Frank, Frank Warren? But I reckon we had for Jose Aberto and Frank Buglio. We know a Brit good, solid British lad, and, and had a couple of questions asked of him. He would have had them questions answered in his own head. I got asked about the, the sort of questions he was asked by Kovalev early on. He would have been better prepared to deal with it. The first time he was asked questions as a pro was against Kovalev, a world class fighter. Yeah, I agree with that because English. Anthony Yard, right, has not won any belts through the levels, has he? What, what had he won? Did he, did he win an area or something? I, can't, I don't think he, I think he gave him a WBO Intercontinental or International or something, didn't they? He, he, he won WBO Intercontinental. He won WBO Intercontinental European and I think he won the English title, I think. Right, I listen to me. Has Anthony Yard won a British title or a European title? No. No. So what's he doing in a world title with Cobbler? And what know. happened to Anthony Yard? Did he win or did he get knocked out? Got knocked out of a job, didn't he? Well, there you go. Oh. Well, probably be a better fighter as a result of it, won't he? He what? Be a better fighter as a result of it, won't he? He'll be a better fighter for getting knocked out. I don't know. Here's a, here's a big question for you that I've written down. In your opinion, who was the greatest British fighter ever in their prime? So not overall, but at their peak of their career, who was the best? Oh, God, there's a lot, isn't there? I mean, obviously, in, from, from, from my era, from, say, me being born in 1970 upwards, I don't know, probably Cal Zaghi, Lennox Lewis, Brock, people like that, Nazim Ahmed, 
Ricky Atten, Barry McGuigan, you could, they, they were all great at the peaks, weren't they? I mean, how long do you want the peak to be? Joe Calzaghe had a 10-year peak, but if you scratch the surface, a lot of them were gimme fights, weren't they? You know what I mean? So I go the peak off what the best win was, probably, mate. Yeah. Yeah. How long do you like the That was a demolition job, that, wasn't it? 13-0, 24 knockouts, pound for pound in Ring Magazine, Frotch against Bute. How can you top that? Or Ricky Atten against Costa Zoo. Lennox Lewis against Holyfield, rematch. Uh, Barry McGuigan against Ijuzo Pedroza. Kel Brook was top 10 pound for pound in Ring Magazine after he beat Porter, wasn't he? So that was a good one. Hey? It's a great win. That was a great win, that. Oh. Great win for Kel Brook. After that, they threw, into, under, threw Kel under a bus, didn't they, match him? Uh, who, else, who else is there? Can't say Frank Brewer now, because... Nassim uh, Hamid. Nassim Hamid. He beat uh, Kevin Kelly in New York. Augie so, Sanchez. Pardon? Robinson. Augie Sanchez. He beat, he beat Robinson, didn't he? He was up Boom Boom Johnson as well, didn't he? He stopped Boom Boom Johnson, didn't he? That's a decent win, Tom Boom Boom Johnson. Robin Reed beat Nardiello in Italy when he were undefeated. Robin Reed, he went out to Italy, beat Nardiello, knocked him out in Italy. That's a great win. Uh, and I had Robin Reed beating Cal Zaghi. So he lost it's in Newcastle, that weren't it? Lost a split decision, pardon? That was in Newcastle, that fight, weren't it? He took a point off him in eighth round, didn't he, Robin Reed? Which I thought was poor. Uh, I don't know. I just you could go on forever, couldn't you? What about this current crop? Callum Smith against Groves. It was shot Groves, wasn't it, or an injured Groves? He's off. Billy it. Joe against Lemieux. It's David Lemieux. Where's Billy Joe's elite win? Yeah, I've got one yet. Billy Joe's best win. It's Andy Lee, isn't it? You'd have to say Andy Lee in terms of pedigree. He were like middle before he won it at middle, wasn't he, Andy Lee? Yeah. I don't know. There's always a, you can always pick fault in some, but all great fighters, all them we mentioned. But you'd have to put your Lennoxes, Carl Zaghi, Frotch, people like that. David A beat uh, Mormack in France, didn't he? Knocked him out after getting off canvas. That was a great win. You can go on forever, can't you? I suppose, but just that, that's from my year what I've watched. Yeah, I'd probably what about uh, was... Kirtland Lang? Yeah. Kirtland Lang. He beat Is Duran, that? didn't he, Roberto Duran, in Detroit. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's a new one. Kirtland Lang beat know. Roberto Duran in Detroit on a Don King show. Got a decision on a Don King show. Hey? You do well to get a decision on a Don King show, don't you? Yeah, I think it was a Don King show. I might be wrong there, but uh, Kirtland Lang against Detroit. Against, sorry, Roberto Duran in Detroit. I think it was a Don King show. Yeah. Beat him. Does Carl Fox have a better CV than Joe Carl like, In my opinion, he does. Yeah, he's, wins, better, he's had a better career. Yeah, As regards his wins, right, he's got better wins against better men. But Joe were undefeated, but he would have protected for a long time, wasn't he, Joe? Frotch weren't protected, that's the difference. Frotch fought the best of the best and he won after the you other. Know why he weren't protect- you know why Carl Frotch weren't protected? Because he believes that if you have a training camp, an hard training camp, why should you go in and fight somebody that you know you're going to win? He believes that to have a train- an hard training camp, you should fight somebody that's a proper fight, a proper, proper fight, and that's how you get your profile up. And he did it the hard way, didn't he? Well, Pascal, didn't he, for the WBC? Undefeated Olympian, who went on to be Diacono and Dawson and win WBC, IBO and Ring Magazine, took their O's. So, yeah, they did. Drew Hopkins as well, didn't he, Pascal? Hey, He drew Hopkins as well, didn't he, Pascal? Yeah, after dropping him twice. Yeah. Do you think Lomachenko getting beat is purely because he went up too many weights? Yes. Not down to skill. And do you think he can beat Lopez in a rematch? No. Do you know why we have weight divisions? To protect yeah. the fighters from themselves because fighters are not superheroes, are they? No. Right. 
So they have it for weight divisions for a reason. Nazim Ahmed wouldn't fight Frank Bruno, would he? He'd get punched all over, wouldn't he? You fight people your own size, don't you? Otherwise, what's the point in having weight divisions? It'd be a free-for-all, wouldn't it? It'd be a battle royale, wouldn't it? Do you think do you think a prime Prince Nassim at featherweight would have been a prime Barry McGuigan in a featherweight? Ooh. The Barry McGuigan that beat Pedroza would have beat Nas, in my opinion. Because Nas the, the really... Nas would be... I thought Kevin Kelly's his best win, but Kevin Kelly had had about 50 fights when he fought him. Barry McGuigan, that will beat Pedroza, would have beat a Pete Nas, I think, yeah. Even though he's got a better record than Barry. I think, but you, they matched them hard in them days. I think a Pete Barry McGuigan beats Nas. A Pete Nas, yeah. Yeah. Oh, surprise there. I thought you would have gone with Nas. Is that it? Yeah, there are only questions. Good man. It's been a pleasure, Tom, and it's been emotional. <laughs> I try not to mention on. Dave today. Hey? I try not to mention Dave today because I know he's on every episode. Dave, Give him a Allen. Break. Dave Allen. Oh, Dave, what do you want to talk, What do you want to say about Dave? Go on. I don't give a break. I don't know what. I don't know. I said I haven't mentioned him today, but. What do you think he's going to do next? Do you think he's going to get a WBA regular shot or something when he gets in the top 15? How's he going to get in the top 15? You've got to fight somebody in the top 15 first, don't you? He'll, rematch that. He'll fight that love joy, won't he? And get him back over. Is that, I thought that fight's off now, is it? Is that, are they getting him it back is, over? Hearn said it's a bigger fight now. So he said the other day, didn't he? It's a bigger fight now. More profile right. behind it. Right. I don't think they're going to fly him over again and just... I don't think so now. I didn't want to, I would want to watch that anyway. Once it all came out about him being a fraud and no footage of him fighting and him being put in top 15 rankings because Don King's got a healthy relationship with the WBA, I think the, the game were up. They tried to pull one between all of them and Don King pulled the plug. So no, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't think that happened. I think Dave will have to fight somebody. Uh, oh, I don't know, but we wish him well. But if he'd have beat him and got in top 15, he would have been there by a fluke, wouldn't he, really? Let's have it that I think I think Dave Allen's waiting now for another broad choice fight now. Because once they fight, the winner will that point vacate the British, won't he, sooner rather than later? And Dave would get in the vacant British right here, wouldn't he? Does Dave Allen deserve to fight for a British title? I don't think he does, no. But then again, he beat Nick Webb. He has knocked out Nick Webb, hasn't he? If Nick Webb fought for the British, people wouldn't turn their heads, would they? When did he knock out Nick Webb? It was two two and a half years ago, weren't two it? Still, years still... ago. So, are we going to dine out on a win from two and a half years ago? Does that get you a British title because you beat somebody two and a half years ago? No, it needs another deal. Yeah, it doesn't need a piece of win. In terms of, I thought he was asking like, what wins has he got to just fly in the British title? For? Well, uh, he's he's got English level wins, hasn't he? Lucas Brown, for that yeah. Lucas Brown qualifier, that's a British win. You got to say at least, hasn't it? I'm going with that fight. Few months in it. Two years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, but by the time we next fight, yeah. So, uh, the Dave Allen soap opera continues, doesn't it? The White Rhino returns. The Don Casadello Oil, but the thing is, as well, though, because he's got such a big profile, Dave, he can afford, he probably will get the British title shot because he's backed by Sky as well, and he's got a profile, yeah. and he's backed by Sky, so he'll be putting it against a Gorman or something, and he might win. He might he retire, win. British champion. It would, right, Dave Allen like If he don't win, they'll still put him out on there because he's a popular lad, isn't he? And it's the entertainment business as well, boxing, isn't it? As well as skill set. But I would like to see him tone it down a bit. All this daftness, walking around in dressing gowns and <laughs> coming out with outlandish probably, statements. Did we get an answer back? Did we get an answer back about his fight with Dorian Darch? About his match fit? So I'm really aren't around. there thing, investigating it. So investigating it. Mm, it was a weird fight, though. That was a weird fight, though. Well, he got knocked out in third round, so you can only do you can only knock out what's in front of you, can't you? So, you can, you can, right. but he chose well, not to fight last weekend. You what, mate? So, he chose not to fight last weekend, though, didn't he? To wait for a bigger payday, so 
be back Maybe in you should have fought Mark Bennett or Simon Vallali, but it would have been for less money. So why do that and not get out again this year when you can hang on and go on Joshua on the card and get a bit of, and get good money? So I can see it as a business decision. But fighting men who have been in a bubble, they just want to fight, don't they, and get a few quid. And if you miss out that day, a bird in hands with two in bush in it. That's how I look at it. Yeah. All right, Tom. Thanks for having me anyway. You take care. All the best, you and your family, lad. You too. Thank you for having me. See ya. Well, that was Tom, Tom the Piper's son. Just a little pig in a way he ran. I think that's about it today. We're going to have a bit of lunch now. Take my car for a wish. So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing and uh, leaving a comment. All right. And thank you for emailing me some questions in for our next video. Winner gets a pair of these. The next four runners up get a porky pig teddy. You go to bed with that. Or you could get your missus. Or if I could. Put it in your window and stop uh, burglars coming to your house. All right. Shout out to Big Viv and Andrea. Hope you're well. Shout out to my mate Rami. Frank Smith, uh, Berry and Dave. How are we doing, chaps? Peace out.